everyone. I'm Katie Arthur. Welcome to The Roundabout. I'm here with Wendy, Joy, and Caitlin. How is everyone doing today? Good. Very good. On today's show, we will be sitting down with student advisor Sodegi Karibi White of the Gloria S. Williams Career Development Center. He will be giving us professional tips on the do's and don'ts of interviewing with potential employers. We have with us today Sodegi Karibi White, a student advisor from the Gloria S. Williams Career Development Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So let's get right into it. What is your role, basically, at the um, Gloria S. Williams Career and Development Center? Well, I'm the assistant director at the Career Development Advisement Center. We, we have dual capacity in terms of academic advisors mm -hmm. and career advisors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we overlap. We have a few uh, employees, staff, that actually do dual roles. Okay. And uh, basically, on the career side, our duty is basically to make sure that we have students prepared to go into the workforce and um, have everything that they need necessary to make that transition a lot easier. Now, what is the best way to find <coughs> a career after college as opposed to just us getting a job? What is the best way in your opinion? I think the best way to find out what you want to be doing uh, <coughs> career-wise should be before college. After college gets a little stressful in terms of trying to determine what you need to be doing, and the pressure is on you to make money, pay loans. So the best time is really as a freshman, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of think about the things that you enjoy doing and see how you can make money out of it, how you can study more in college or any other place uh, to um, get, your, you know, get your hands dirty, mm -hmm. get some experience, as well as um, get a sense of what other opportunities are available for you within your particular scope of study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we go out for jobs, we usually, you know, we, they tell us to have our resumes ready to make sure that, you know, we're up to snuff with everything that's going on. Could you tell us about some of your resume writing experiences? So, um, The interesting thing is, regardless of technology and how quickly we're moving with jobs and how people apply for jobs, the resume is not going anywhere. Resume is only going to transform into different platforms and different applications of showing somebody that doesn't know you what your expertise is, what your work history is. Mm -hmm. So everyone basically needs to have one. You need to start from somewhere to uh, put together a resume. Mm -hmm. um, but in passing, students are very interesting students because uh, a good 80 to 90 percent of them actually work while they're going to school. So there's always something mm -hmm. to start off with. Mm -hmm. And then the rest would be you selling yourself on the resume, so the resume is a combination of things, is um, factual representation of your work, <coughs> your experience, your skills, but also your capability. Mm -hmm. Now that's the selling part. Mm -hmm. So again, it's a selling document, so you have to kind of think about yourself and where you've worked and how you did what you did and what you're capable of doing and streamline that. So what are the, some of the common mistakes you see students making? Um, the most common mistake I see, and maybe it's me now because I see so many that it becomes a pet peeve, is basically just <laughs> listing responsibilities. Listing responsibilities is pretty much what most uh, people expect to do on a resume, mm. but that's like the most boring resume you can ever read. <laughs> mm. Because you're telling me something that I could have told you just from your job title. Mm. Skill section is something that sometimes are missed on a resume. Uh, but th those are one of the areas where employers look at, you know, your work experience, your skills. The skills section, again, is what's selling you. That's what makes, you know, uh, the next person interested. Uh, and an objective, before I go in, <laughs> the objective is an optional part of the resume. So don't sweat over the objective. You can skip the objective totally. It's just something that says, I'm interested in this job and I have that, 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 that. All right, we'll get to that. So you can really skip that if you really try to keep a one-page resume. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what makes uh, an interview successful? That's a million-dollar question. And I don't think there's really one answer for, the, for that, but there are a couple of things that would make your interview more successful. Uh -huh. And that's basically you being a human being, being a person, being relaxed and being yourself, and understanding that what the employer is looking for is somebody to be part of their team. So they're looking for a personality. Yeah. They're looking for capability. So if you could come out and let your personality shine uh, to the employer, but understanding what they're looking for. 
so that you can use that aspect of your personality that probably um, is more likely to be a good fit for the job and you know elevate that a little bit show your knowledge you know without going overboard with it you know because people also, also want to see that you have frailties as well you know there's certain things that you're not so good at so you're always going to get the weakness question right, mm -hmm. right? and it's not one for you to show that where well, i feel at this there's something for you to just highlight and say well there's certain things i'm not so good at but i'm getting better at okay, so you should yeah. never ever stay at um, negative, yeah. a, a negative where you know there's nothing moving it right there I'm just you know I'm just really tardy I could never be on time <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah, you're, to, gonna the you're never gonna get the job <laughs> thanks for your honesty mm -hmm. but what you want to do is say that you're working on something it's getting better or I've gotten better and so some what are some of the worst experiences uh -huh. that you've come across when seeing people interview or doing mock interviews I think probably one of the worst I've seen are just people fidgeting and it's something that comes natural to a lot of folks. Uh, even myself, it took me a while to be able to uh, sit and just uh, have conversation without gesticulating, moving around. Yeah. And it's probably one of the most distracting things during an interview. So besides the other distractions of how you're dressed and everything, when you're communicating, it should be clear. Because you and I could say the same thing, but just because I was gesticulating or doing this and that, my message was lost. Yeah. Now, speaking of communication, does social media have a positive or negative effect on career development? Um, very positive. You know, I, do, I really don't see any negative, except there's something out there that's really distasteful. Mm -hmm. you know, but for the most part, everyone wants to know uh, that you have some kind of social media uh, expertise, experience, and that you could utilize it for different uh, things, yeah. And finally, um, what are some things you'd advise not to do during an interview, other than obviously the ones that are <laughs> stand out? Well, number one thing is don't lie. <laughs> Just don't lie. That's it, basically. So the best thing is not to lie, because it's either they, you know, find out during the interview that your, your story doesn't add up, your examples don't add up, or you get uh, hired, mm -hmm. and within that three months, that probationary three months, mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that you know nothing about Excel, or you've never <laughs> used you know, Twitter before, all of those things. You know, so it always comes back to bite you. Well, thank cool. you so much, Mr. Kirby White, for coming and joining us. Thank you, it was a pleasure.